um, okay, gift um, quickly. Let's just go through this past paper. Um, I actually promise that I'll be walking through each chapter every day. So um, today we're looking at chapter two, um, classified past paper. Our chapter two has to do with energy and the environment. And the first question we have here is, and uh, describe the formation of oil. Now, oils are uh, is formed uh, over millions of years. Form over millions of years, and this happens when sea creatures, sea creatures, and uh, plants die and settle at the bottom of a sea. Settle at the bottom of the sea. Now, um, uh, it is now exposed. It's exposed um, to heat and pressure. Which will eventually convert it to oil. Yeah. Which will eventually convert it to oil. That's it. Now, the next question is uh, a graph shows the size of major accidental oil spill into the ocean so size of major accidental oil spill into the ocean uh, so let's look at that we have size of oil spill in per million barrels and uh, possibly we have different areas uh, or areas of oil spill incident now say so complete the graph for the this uh, oil spill to show that 3.3 million barrels of oil we are spilled into the ocean 3.3 million barrels were spilled into the ocean so you come uh you have one one space in between so 3.3 if this is four so you have three and individually you have 10 boxes so this will be 3.1 3.2 3.3 yeah at this point then you just um, shed it down to make sure only one is left um, then you're done with that one free mark that the next question is, they said in 2010, the deep water uh, horizon oil spill was the largest accidental marine oil spill in the world. Now, it was estimated that oil was released into the ocean for approximately 85 days. Now, calculate the average amount of oil released in the ocean per day. So, it was released for 85 days. Now, in 2010, so what's the total for deep water horizon? The total is 5.1 million. Now, uh, so you have million per barrel per day. So for you to have it per day is 5.1 uh, million um, divided by 85. This will give you how many barrel is being, how many uh, the amount of oil that is being released into the ocean mm -hmm. per day. So now this is suggest why the average amount of oil was not released on every day of the oil spill incident um, so just why the average amount of oil was not released on every day because uh, different amounts can actually be spilled um, on different days different amounts can be spilled on different days so it's not the same amount that is peeled per day. So eventually you have different. So let me see something here at the max scheme. Uh, so you see this, if you divide that, you get um, something around 0 0.06. Um, so flow rate might change each day. So it's not the same amount. Now the duration of spill also is an estimate. Now some oil might not have leaked out before the main leak was detected and some oil might have continued to leak after the well 
was cut. So, but basically, um, once yeah. you get or you're exposed to such kind of question, you should just know, um, use your normal analytical ability to know that um, that can only happen when they, they will really know um, the rate or the amount that is being released each day. That is why there's approximately an issue with estimating. Now, the next question here is, they said, uh, the map shows the area affected by deep water horizon oil spill. So this deep water horizon oil spill, and these are the areas uh, it affects. Now, let's see the question now. Four more questions. It suggests the possible impact of deep water horizon oil spill on the coastal ecosystem. Now, one major thing you need to know is deep water horizon major city affected areas. Now, so the first thing, these are the affected areas. You find out that, that means the oil spill will, it will affect, it will affect uh, mammals. Mammals, how will that happen? So you should always link it um, to the major impact of oil spill. How will that happen? It will affect mammals by, uh, due to reduction, due to reduction in uh, oxygen because the oil on the surface will reduce the amount of oxygen that will be able to penetrate the uh, water body. Now, another major thing is birds will also be affected. So birds will be affected such that uh, their feathers uh, can be uh, stained so uh, the birds get stuck and unable to fly and unable to fly to fly which can eventually uh, which will eventually lead to death eventually lead to death now, see how we are linking them to uh, other impact so you find out that it will also fisheries will also be affected uh, fisheries uh, so there will be reduction in fish uh, population because of lack of oxygen and also things such as uh, there can be bioaccumulation for organisms that consume these dead fish that have been stained with uh, water, uh, with oil. So that's, that if you write that, you should be able to get your full map. Now this is take two strategies for minimizing the impact of oil spill. So how do you control um, oil spill within an area, if that has been done, you can use schemas to remove them. You can use um, detergent. I think you can also use booms. And sometimes you can use cultural methods like um, burning it. So you see, there's a maximum two mark for reference to sea turtle or beds, uh, marine mammals, marine mammals and uh, this so we, we mentioned those two we mentioned three of it so our two mark is sure then the development of each of this point in the development you see we, we mentioned the how the organism will be impacted we talked about bioaccumulation which is chemical toxicity um so with with all that you'll be able to get your uh, full mark uh, on that on this particular question now, the next thing is, uh, okay, you see, in cleaning the ocean, you you can use detergent spray. You see, we talk about booms, we talk about schemas, ship. Um, so all these three uh, will help to agricultural methods such as burning off the surface. So any area that you have uh, oil spillage, and the basic thing is you can, you can burn it off. Uh, that's a cultural method of control use schemas, detergent spray, and bloom. So the detergent will break the bond holding the oil together. So it makes it easy for you to clean up the ocean. Now there's a fussy fuel such as oil are limited and non-renewable. So just why some countries are not investing in alternative form of energy. Now first, you don't invest in what you don't have. So usually uh, it's unavailable. Unavailable. So uh, another thing is uh, it's expensive. Another thing is uh, the technology to enhance other alternative source of energy is not available. So you can look at technology aspect. The 
technology is not available. So uh, I think with this you get you get your mark. Uh, so quickly you see things like um, expensive. Uh, you have uh, public opposition to change. Renewables are not constant. Renewable and transfer usually produce less energy. Then you look at country may not have the suitable renewable site. Um, let me see. Blah, 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 blah. Energy resource is a global issue, so it's difficult because you need um, international agreement about it. Uh, then you have things like resistance to accept scientific evidence. And some countries are rich in fossil fuels, so they don't look for alternative source. And so with that, uh, I think you see they talk about machinery here, so it can actually be related to the technology aspect we mentioned why answering this question. And so in order for you to do something, you know, remember, you have to look at the EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment. Uh, also, um, this we also determine if you will enhance or uh, use this energy or not. So next is question number two has to do with generation of electricity. So the diagram shows some of the processes used to generate electricity using nuclear power station. Now, use the diagram to describe how electricity is generated within a nuclear power station. So, first, um, this you have a nuclear reactor and uh, you have a condenser, so you have uh, water moving up. So, first thing is you, you the nuclear. The nuclear uh, reactor that we split, releasing releasing energy. Now the energy is used to heat water. The energy is used to heat water. Heat water to form steam. Now, the steam is used to rotate the topan, which is this. Steam is used to rotate the turbine. Turbine to produce mechanical energy. Now, um, the generator is usually connected to the turbine, so the generator, uh, which is connected to the turbine, to the turbine, help to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy. The mechanical energy to electrical energy. That's it. So um, next is so describe three reasons why using nuclear power to generate electricity is better uh, than using coal. First, small amount produce huge amount of energy, small quantity. Produce huge amount huge amount of energy. Now another thing is um, nuclear power uh, it does not produce greenhouse gas. Does not produce greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas, that means it doesn't cause, it does not country, doesn't cause global warming. Um, I think I've put in two points in one here. It doesn't produce greenhouse gas, uh, it doesn't cause global warming. A small quantity produces huge amount of energy. I think those are three, three, three. But let me see if it was actually slashed. 
um, question number two. So, okay, uranium fuel um, decay fusion water pump to reactor react water converted thermal energy steam turbines rotate and generator converted you get your full answer there now another uh, impact is it no co2 is produced so no greenhouse gas is produced so it reduces impact of greenhouse effect so it reduces climate change i said it so two mark um there is no small amount produced huge amount of energy but that should be giving us um, a mark on the alternative response um, so no acid rain because no SO4 is being released. So no, no CO2, no SO4. And um, so because it doesn't produce SO4, it doesn't cause acid rain. And eventually uh, the impact does not uh, affect any form of water body or plant, uh, which are one of the major impact of acid rain in an environment. Okay, so let's move. Now they said, describe ways a country can reduce its energy demand without damaging its economy. Now, you, you need to also know uh, what are the factors that um, has led to an increase in energy demand, I think is population, uh, urbanization. Uh, energy is also used in terms of uh, agriculture and industries. So how can you reduce it without affecting the environment? What you're not looking at the methods are uh, used in managing these energy resources and you find that the one is you turn uh you use energy efficient devices use energy efficient devices energy efficient devices now you can also uh you turn off um electronics and um and possibly the the light bulb when not in use light bulb when not in use you can also bring concept like using an insulators insulated houses and the rest uh, that we go a long way to giving you a mark you see um here they said efficiency, increase efficiency of use, uh, reduce consumption of buildings. So this is the insulation comes in here. Use more energy efficient devices like machines. Um, so other methods in which you can help to reduce energy consumption is education. You educate the people. Uh, another method here you can look at is um, you use transport policies can help to reduce energy consumption also okay so quickly is it building a nuclear power station is expensive uh, yeah so the table shows the percentage cost for building a new nuclear power station so um, blah 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 the total here is 100 so they say complete the table by calculating the percentage cost for labor uh, so they need us to calculate the percentage cost for labor uh, this is quite straightforward because if you know that the total is 100 you add everything here minus uh, from 100 you should be able to get the total for uh for labor so it's as simple as that uh, if you add this you get the total you minus it from 100 so this is 12 12 that's like 24. this 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 is this two is 20 then i still have my 16 then this is 13. Uh, 24 plus this 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 is 10 so this is 40 40 plus 20 is 60 60 plus 13 that's uh, 73 so you have 100 minus 73 what would you get uh, 10 9 10 that's 7 9 this that's 27 so your answer is 27 that's all now they said uh complete we've completed that and the power station is predicted to cost 14 billion usd uh, to build now calculate the total equipment cost for building the power station 14 billion so total equipment cost to cost 14 billion usd to build uh equipment cost so equipment the total for equipment is 40 days which is 60 so it's 60 percent of the total amount so 60 over 100 times 14 billion 
that will give your answer. Simple. Now, we have uh, the said a nuclear power station creates radioactive waste. The management of the waste is expensive and difficult. Now, the most dangerous waste costs 93,000 USD per meter cube to manage. Now, it is estimated that the power station will produce 12 meter cube of the most dangerous waste each year. Now, calculate the estimated cost of managing it per year. Now, this is quite simple because it will now be 93,000 divided by 12. Remember, here you only have USD. So, this is meter cube per meter cube. This is uh, uh, meter cube. This, this. So, if you do your calculation, you should be able to get the answer right. So, um, quickly, you see, we got this right. Um, so, 12, 12, 12, you might lost everything. You have 48%. If answer is incorrect, allow one mark. Uh, okay. The, our calculation was 24 plus 20. That's 48. Ah, I made a mistake here. Let me see. 12, 12, 24. Okay, I added building material. Building material is under other costs. It's not part of this. So this should be 48. Um, look at 24, 20. So that's 44. This is 24. This is... Okay, this is another 24. So that's 48. Sorry. So with that, we are, we are on track. Uh, next question is, let's see, wait, let me see, okay, the, the third part, we correct, okay, no, I think, this should be calculate the estimated cost for managing the waste by the most dangerous waste cost this to manage. It's estimated that the power station will produce this waste each year. So calculate okay, it will be 93 times 12. That'll give you answer, not divide, sorry. Now the bar chart shows the number of oil tankers spilled in the world oceans. In the world's ocean between 1978 6 and 2016. Now, complete the bar chart using uh, data from the table for 1997. Uh, small oil spill, so you know, from your key, small oil spill is the one that is dark, and large oil spill is 18, small oil spill is 10. Uh, so uh, the large oil spill come first, so 1997, you look, large oil spill is 18, so 18, this is, this is 18, because each box represents two, I think this should be my 18 here, for large oil spill, whichever you need to be very careful, please, okay, sorry, this one is not painted, so I'm just trying to, so the next one is 10. So 18 plus 10, we give you 28. So you start from here and you move up to 28. So from here, uh, this is 20. So now bent that one, that's, that's all. So because you just need to have 10, uh, this large oil spill is 18. Now they say identify the year with the highest number of large oil spill. Highest number of large oil spill. Um, I think that it should be. This is 1980. So if you have 1978, 1979 have the largest oil spill. So. Uh, 1979 and they say the smallest oil spill. The smallest oil spill, la 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 la. Um, small oil spill, so that should be. Uh, look at no, not here. Smallest oil spill should be this. 
and the year is also not given 2010-2011. Okay. Now they say describe the trend in the oil tanker spill between 19. So just describe the trend. It is it is it decreases generally so first give a general trend it decreases so first it decrease from 1976 to 2016 now another point you give is it is um it is how would i put it it i want to say it is undulating and so it, it was not a constant decrease or increase, it, it wasn't a constant decrease. Uh, so there are different levels of spill per year. So some year is, it decreases and increases uh, and gradually from 1960 to 2016. Then after that, you should now include statistics where you can say in 1960, the total um, small and large oil spill was uh, 92, 93. Uh, while uh, in 2016, you know, probably, so uh, we know that uh, generally there was uh, a decrease in terms of oil spillage. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me check the mark scheme to see how that was structured. Um, now, overall reduction, okay, so we got that small and large oil spill so you see here they use statistics here so this will give you one mark uh one mark then you see it is fluctuating it wasn't constant and you use relevant data to support that uh, so that will give you another mark so you can uh, i just give a general trend which is really good but um, if it is more than a three mark question you can actually begin to um, specify you can talk about small oil spill separate and talk about large oil spill separate uh, not just looking at general trend but usually it is better you give uh, a major general trend first before you begin to look at how uh, other uh, other factors that you can add to it to get your full mark so once you give a general trend you look for you look for on uh, you look for areas where um, you find that there is obvious difference, then you use your statistics most of the time to get the full mark. Now, suggest two reasons for the difference in the number of oil tanker spill. Uh, you know, when you look at oil tanker spill, um, one of the major things use maybe some use uh, in 2016, there might be use of uh, the double hull tank. Double hull tankers. Now, uh, you can have better, um, better tanker crews, um, tanker crews that, 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 that they are more trained. Um, you can have something like the MAPO, Marine Pollution Agreement, that helps in regulating uh, how uh, these tankers are used within uh, marine bodies. Now, they say explain ways oil spill can impact the marine organism i think i've i've explained this question when we are looking at um this aspect where is it uh blah 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 this so these are impacts in which it has um bed can get stuck it can lead to bioaccumulation it can pollute the environment it can reduce the amount of oxygen that can penetrate through the water it can lead to death of these organisms also which can be consumed by others so that's it i think we've answered this it's already answered so it's just um it's just a, a repeated question so now they say transportation of oil by tankers is one of the major source of oil pollution state one other major source of oil pollution outside transportation um i think you can look you, you, in this aspect you can look at the exploration uh, of the oil so outside transport they can be spilled during during exploration or extracting or in the extraction process so let's see something um, first 
uh, transferring leaks from oil wells, rain pipeline, and transferring oil between transport methods, uh, runoff from lands and industries. So you see the impact of this can be, uh, you see, damage of feeding area, it causes debt, reduce gas exchange because the water will now have less oxygen. Now, uh, this marine organism, the beds can actually be feathers, can be covered with oil so they won't be able to fly and cut out light from the marine plant so reduces the rate of photosynthesis because the surface is now covered with oil so light cannot penetrate so photosynthesis will not occur. Um, it also have an impact on the food web and it damage the habitats also. So these are impact of oil spillage. Um, okay, so let's see chapter four. They said, describe two advantages of using nuclear power rather than using fossil fuel to generate electricity. I think we've done this already. This was done earlier. Where they said nuclear power doesn't produce SO4. Nuclear power does not produce CO2, so it doesn't produce SO4, so it doesn't cause acid rain. Uh, also, it does not produce CO2, so it does not cause climate change and global warming. Now, uh, explain how people can reduce the consumption of electricity in their houses, their turn off devices, use energy efficient, the turn off um, devices when not in use, use en energy efficient devices. They can have a uh, house insulation. I think we've, that has been answered also before. This has been answered earlier. Uh, question number five describe the formation of oil spill. Repeated question done. This was the first question we did earlier. We've answered this. So you can actually take the video backward uh, if you need further explanation on that. Now, describe the advantage and disadvantage of oil as a source of energy. Um, one of the major disadvantages, uh, it release, release SO4 and CO2 to the environment. So it causes, it causes global warming because it's a greenhouse gas, um, global warming. Another thing you know is that it's a greenhouse gas, so it can actually lead to climate change also, it can lead to climate change. Now, um, another advantage of using uh, oil is that uh, the technology of extraction, technology of extraction, technology of extraction is known, so um, it is readily available. Is readily available so there is a lot of deposit of this oil uh, another advantage is it provides jobs for the oil workers uh, so let's see if I'm on track with this now no all limited carbon dioxide emission no SO2 so does not cause global warming small amount uh, large uses raw material now another thing is um, here, how can you reduce the amount of energy used at home? So you see insulation, turn off electrical devices, use energy efficient devices. Uh, you see improve natural light, heat recovery scheme, better natural ventilation instead of using air conditioning system. Now, uh, here I have uh, something like, um, okay, formation of oil. I think we've done this. Advantage and disadvantages as can easily be pumped or transported in pipe, um, versatile in use, ease of current use, energy, um, idea of energy dense fuel, it is widely available, so you just need two of this. Um, so versatile in use, so most of them is used for cars and the rest. Then disadvantages, oh, I really forget, forget about this. One major disadvantage of oil is that it's non-renewable. Releases CO2, SO4. Uh, it causes global warming, acid rain, damaging the environment. And uh, so next, let's see another question here. It's the map. The map shows average oil consumption per person in 2015. Now, here is low, here is medium, and here is high. 
oil consumption per person, medium oil consumption per person, low oil consumption per person. So state the continent where oil use per person is low in all continents, all countries. That's Africa. Now state the continent with high oil use per person. Uh, that's North America, so I always use my person. You just write it there. You're good. Now explain why. Um, so that is the North America. Now they say explain why all you use per person is much higher in some country than in others. Um, first uh, reason can be because it is available in that country. Um, but in Africa, it's available, but the, the use per person is not available. Now, you can also look at the purchasing power. So, uh, that means the living standard of the people uh, will also differ between countries. The level of development, the amount of industries uh, also differs. So, you expect that the rate of energy consumption should also um, differ. So, let's see that quickly. So, you see availability of oil uh, explained. So, the oil availability is also a factor. So the wealth of the people within the country, and the so the wealth will determine the number of people in vehicles that we make use of this um, energy to to generate um, to run their their devices. Uh, we also look at a greater heating uh, system in most of this. Um, countries develop economy because of here you look at the weather uh, some countries don't need oil because they have alternative source if it's available like geothermal energy and also hydro power uh, okay that's it so let me see 23 where they say the map shows the location of oil spill in a seven year period in the sea around part of northwest europe okay um describe the distribution of oil spill around the map uh, so if this is oil spill if you look at this you find out that it is found within the never ever smoke weed so it is found within the eastern part of the map it cut across um, the english channel down to areas around denmark and also you can find it uh, within close to the shores of some part uh, around uh, Norway and the rest. So once you write that you uh, within the north, this is north um, eastern part of the map. You also have a distribution of it there, but the highest concentration is around the shore of uh, Maidalands and Belgium. You write that, that that's all. So here's a discuss strategies for minimizing the impact of oil spill now this is we've done this question before so how do you control um, oil spillage within an environment so you see most is found within the north sea southern part of the north sea uh, in line with belgium denmark netherlands so you find that in the straight line it's clustered within the northwest coast of france uh, west of the english channel so you just use relative location to describe the distribution so you see here you, you talk about how it is actually uh, how you clean up the environment from oil spill like I said earlier you use booms you use detergent you use schemas you burn it on, around the surface uh, which is a more cultural method now number six let me see the question if it's something we've done then there is no need to cross through it uh, describe the changes Think this you just you can actually get the answers of this question from analyzing this data and the graph which is quite a straightforward question now describe the changes in energy consumption you can also do this uh, if this is energy consumption between this to this so you can actually look at the changes um, energy consumption increases between 2000 to 2005 then it decreases between 2005 to 2010 then from 2010 to it increases by i think 100 metric tones so that's just simple description of what you have there then yeah this is so just reasons for the changes in energy consumption in europe and asia and oceania from so this is you come europe and oceania so you, you look at your graph look at europe it increases uh it increases then became constant 
and Oceania. You see, Oceania was on a constant increase, and at this point, it was the same in terms of consumption between Europe and Oceania. So, just the same way we use the skill we use in analyzing those graphs, you give the general trend, you find areas of anomalies, and you now use statistics that will definitely give you a three mark. But in this case, they want you to diff uh, you do for this, you do for this. So, if you get three here, two here, whichever, then you still be able to get your five marks. Then let me see uh, a pie chart showing different sources of energy. They say calculate the increase in total electricity generation in Europe from this to this. So um, total electricity generation was this. Uh, total electricity generation here was this between these two years. So they said you should calculate the increase. So simple. You just minus this from this to give you the value. Straightforward because you're not asking for percentage increase. Now, suggest two reasons why demand for electricity in Europe has increased since 1974. Now, what are the factors that affect demand? Increase in population, uh, industries, and um, improving the standard of living. That will give you the full mark. Now, state which energy resource was used uh, in 1984 but not in 2014. So you come. Uh, was used in 1984 but not in 2014. So which energy is here? This is here but it's no longer here. Which is that that's oil so you call oil so that's simple you 